Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and literally, while I was filming my last box of War Games Atlantic stuff, this showed up. Another box from War Games Atlantic, not that I'm complaining, mind you. Uh, we have now the URA for War Games Atlantic's Death Field line of, you know, sci-fi soldiers in the grim darkness of the far future, or... Just another glorious day in the core. So what do we got in this box? Well, we've got 24 hard plastic soldiers that can be equipped with standard infantry rifles. Uh, and headgear choices. Snipers. Okay, so it looks like, I guess this will make up for the fact that I didn't get any kind of a crouching pose in the Space Nom guys that War Games Atlantic did with reptilian overlords but then again that had the guy running and obviously my first thought is what can i kit bash these guys with i think these guys much like the previous cannon fodder set are going to be quite compatible with a wide range of games and projects for sci-fi miniature enthusiasts so without further ado let's take a look at those sprues Hopefully there's more in the box than with the Space Knight. That was my one sad regret. Well, this has four sprues as well, so they're looking at about the same. So right off the bat, I kind of actually appreciate the fact that the body is actually one piece. I don't need to faff around with Trying to get everything lined up. It's just nice, simple, straightforward. Everybody's feet are on the ground, which is going to make putting them on bases of whatever type you feel like much easier. And there is a full array of weapons. And thankfully, we also do have the numbers to correspond to all of the various guns. We do have a couple of, I was going to say individually handed weapons, but maybe not. I don't see anything in the way of close combat weaponry, which can go either way, you know. So we've got like all the basic rifles, got the big cannons right here. Are they the same or are they different? They look pretty much the same. I'm assuming that's a grenade launcher. I have no idea. This looks like it's part of a flamer, maybe? Another grenade. We'll get to the heads in a sec. Shotgun's an interesting choice. I'll take it. And then this looks to be the sniper rifle right here, even if it's upside down. That's okay. We're gonna probably go ahead and build at least one of every weapon, just to see, let you guys see what they all look like. Got a pistol on there. I'm assuming these things are... Yeah, they're backpacks of some sort. Got an assortment of other hands. Most of them are designated with a number, so I guess they have very specific uses. A couple of random little bits. Thought I saw a grenade. It looks like a grenade, doesn't it? Maybe it's only part of the gun. I'm not sure. All right, what kind of heads do we have? We've got some typical near future sci-fi helmets that are totally out of focus. That helps. I mean, my first thought obviously is Colonial Marines and Aliens. Now, these are interesting. You've got fully enclosed helmets of some sort. And we'll fight it out in the atmosphere. But the problem is we have all these sleeved, well, half-sleeved, short-sleeved arms. So I guess they're not going to be fighting out in space. Okay, over here we have more of the same heads, except the, like hard sci-fi ones, except we do not have any kind of faceplate covering. Baseball caps, obviously, for your heavy weapon dudes. Looks like a random can, I was going to say canteen, but the more than likely that's extra spare ammo drums for the cannons. Grenade. A 
couple of regular hats. Only one bear head. That's kind of surprising, actually. Of course, if you're like me and you have a pile of these kits of various sorts from War Games Atlantic or just about any other plastic minis manufacturer, you probably have your fair share of heads to play around with. And I mean, I think if you want a nice unified military style look for your models, I think it's probably a wise choice that we have the very traditional standard helmets and I'm making my camera go crazy. So that's probably a good sign that I'm going to go take a break. I'm going to go put these together and we'll see how everything turns out. So sit tight. All right, we got some of our URA put together here. And for whatever reason, every time I look at their faces, I just can't help but think of Yujing models from Infinity, and I don't really know why. Now, admittedly, there is a bit of a mess there, both on my hands and the model. We'll get all that cleaned up, obviously, but I just want to give you guys a quick look-see as to how a basic infantryman in the Marines is going to look in the far future. So one of the things that I noticed right away was that we have a lot of options for the hands. Um... After building the Space Nom kit, we had a lot of just, you know, I, I felt everything was just kind of paired up, whereas this set, yeah, there's certain hands that go with certain kits, and I, I guess for the first few models, I actually tried to follow the suggested, you know, pairing, but I, I figured out right away, there's a lot of one-handed weapons, and you can have all kinds of fun gestures and poses with them, and yes, I know I need to clean it up better. One of the things about having to put these on camera is I notice all of the imperfections and <laughs> hastiness of me getting things ready to film. I forget to finish cleaning off a lot of these models as best as I should. You'll also notice there's a lot of tactical gear on these guys. I didn't actually glue any extra. I don't recall even if there were any extra pouches or anything on the sprue. But these guys are quite well equipped in comparison to stuff like the cannon fodder who have literally nothing. They got the gun in their hands and that's about it. A more basic pose. Just this gluey of mess. Wasn't sure what this hand was actually supposed to be doing. It doesn't look like it's supposed to be all the way up in the air because there's actually a different fist that's kind of calling for a halt or something like that. And I believe there's at least a few more arms in various gestures and poses pointing forward. In fact, I'd almost argue that there were less actual action poses than just generic posing ones. Yeah, I gotta fix that up. I could not get this guy's gun aligned closer to where he's like actually trying to aim down some kind of a line of sight target type thing. Just didn't want to work out for me. That's always the case it seems when it comes to models that have to have a weapon in both hands. I am awful. Awful at lining things up correctly. Now that is not the correct head that he's supposed to have. That is the correct backpack. At least I believe it's on correctly. I'm... that's debatable. I want to say this is a Stargrave head. That's been chopped down a bit. I think with that Stargrave head it makes a perfect little, what they call the Hellgast, Dudes in Kill Zone. Mm, I don't know. Is it the same? Okay, I have no idea where that head came from then. They're not the same. Maybe they are and I'm just hallucinating. No, the helmet, the, the tip of the helmets are quite different. And the gas masks are different. This looks a bit more stormtrooper-ish. Like an Eisenkern head. Which would be fine and dandy, but... I don't own any Eisenkern, so I don't know where that head came from. If you guys can recognize it, by all means, please let me know in the comments, because I've been trying to figure that out, where that head came from. I honestly assumed it was a Stargrave head, but looking more closely, I don't think that's the case. 
And speaking of things that I have a horrible time lining up, you can see I made an awful mess of that. With a little sanding and knife work won't clear out. Oh god, his arm isn't even attached to his body. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. I'm not good at lining these up, and I wasn't sure where that handle's actually supposed to attach, so uh, we might have to chop those arms off and redo those. Speaking of chopping arms off, uh, just because I can't help myself, as always is the case, went ahead and stuck some Space Nom arms on a Ura body with a cannon fodder head, and I mean, while the arms are overtly muscled, they don't look that out of place while he's wearing that barbecue grill helmet and carrying that giant snipe. I mean, that, that rifle is gigantic. It, it looks almost out of scale with him, but that's neither here nor there. Grabbing some other random models, because that's what we love to do here. I mean, obviously... The first thought is, how are they going to scale up with Frostgrave slash Stargrave stuff? Yeah, I caught myself there. I think, given the base sizes, I think they'll work out pretty well. I had assumed, like I said, that one head here was a Frostgrave one, but Stargrave? I'm like, I'm looking at a Frostgrave guy right here, which is why I keep saying Frostgrave. Let's see, he's just like, I need attention with his Menoth symbol on his shield there. I don't know what that's all about. <clears throat> but yeah, even those guys, if you wanted to use their heads for something, as I search for a Kingdom Death base bottom, I mean, I don't think that's going to be an issue size-wise, if you wanted to, like, bust out some bits from, like, the Knight's Kit or something, or even the Wizard's Kit, or the new Barbarians that I still have yet to pick up. Grabbing some other random stuff. I don't have any enforcers handy, but just some more modern scaled mantic plastic humans. I guess they're going to fit in pretty well. So if you wanted to go with a nightly turnip type thing, I mean, that might work. Grabbing my perennial GW friends. While you're mixing and matching. You know, these kind of near-future high-tech guys with uh, Age of Sigmar stuff. I have no idea, but I won't fault you for it. Actually pretty well scaled with the Marines. You know, one of these days I've got to get some actual plastic guardmen, guardsmen from GW. I mean, I do have a few plastic <laughs> GW humans, just to give you a good size scale. A little bit taller. Uh, Orlocks are some buff boys, so. Yeah, they're both hunched over though, that doesn't count. I don't have any, do I have any D-Lock guys? Handy? Should I have that there? Cause yeah, I do in fact. Now, modern D-Locks are a little bit large as are the Goliaths, but, you know, you want to get creative with your kit bashing, I'm not one to fault you. And that's like the most recent Astra Militarum type model I believe I've got on my shelf. It's a Universal Guard from the Maker's Cult that I printed. Just to give you guys a good size idea, I'm looking around if there's anything else that might be of similar size. Oh, well, obviously, I'm like I set all these War Games Atlantic guys out. Why am I not grabbing them? I don't know. There's just too much stuff in front of me, and that's why. Obviously, scaling quite well with the ever expanding range of Deathfields kits. I am missing one. Le Grand Man. You know, I have painted more of them. I should get one that's in a little bit more of an upright position rather than kind of doing his horse stance, squatting down with his gun there. But, I mean, 
you know, like all war games, Atlantic plastic kits, I think there's a lot of absolute kit bash potential. For whatever reason, I kept thinking of Romans. I don't know why. I think with their late Gothic and Roman kits, might be able to come up with some fun, bizarre kit bashes before you go all full mutant, like as I am often want to do. Like some of them RGD satyrs might be fun to mess with. Anyway, so I gotta say. Overall, nice, fun kit. i got to say it's a lot more versatile, I think, than the Space Nom guys, which I would have grabbed, but I can't seem to figure out where I put them, so my apologies to Reptilian Overlord for not including those. Uh, but I think if you're looking for some nice, solid... I don't want to say generic, because generic, I feel, is kind of like a derogatory term for a nice kit like this, but like universal in their usage and appeal. I think this kit's got a lot... Of potential going for it you know there's a variety of weapons you've got you know the shotguns there's pistols there's the big old auto cannon type things there are sniper rifles not anywhere as ridiculous as this one I, but this guy's just a cool guy like that this guy needs like a camo cape or something on his back hmm all right thinking out loud here but just the variety of hand gestures hands in general uh, poses, weapons, even stances. <clears throat> this is one that I was kind of lamenting. We didn't have any guys squatting down, ducking down. Uh, thankfully, just about everything, even the guys in the more active poses, do have at least something of that back foot still on the base. So they are a little bit less apt, I think, to go snapping off at the ankles when you inadvertently grab them to move them into whatever new area they're entering. But I know I've had that issue on far too many occasions, snapping models at the ankles because it's just too much weight on such a little contact point. So thankfully, that's not the case with these guys. Uh, I got plenty in a box, so I'm going to continue to goof around and experiment with them and hopefully figure out a decent, simple, basic paint scheme to get them started, and hopefully we will see them back here soon on some Monday morning videos. So, as always, we will have that link down below if you haven't ever had a chance to check out War Games Atlantic's site. They are always running some kind of cool deals, so if you are looking to bulk up whatever kind of army it is you're interested, do take a look, because they always have some great deals there. And with that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane rambling on for far too long with obscurities and miniatures, saying thanks for watching. And we'll see you back here soon. Bye-bye.